I like Odoo accounting. I do. It may be a little more freeform than a lot of people are used to, especially if you come from QuickBooks, but it gets the job done. But there are definitely little quality of life improvements that I like to make when I first come into a new Odoo database. And I'm going to show you one of those today. So payments inside of Odoo are kind of locked down. Odoo assumes that if we're creating a payment, we're either applying that payment to accounts payable or accounts receivable. Now that's not a horrible assumption. I mean, there's a lot that revolves around AR and AP, but what if we want to have a payment go out to a vendor and there is no bill, or we want to go ahead and sell something to somebody, but we really don't have an invoice for it. Let's receive some money from a customer real quick. So say we come in and this is Anita Oliver. I'm gonna do it for 500 bucks. Date's going to be the fifth, uh, journal's going to be bank, payment method is going to be manual, and the rest is all just good. I'm going to go ahead and confirm this, and we look at the journal entry, I've got 500 bucks going to accounts receivable, so it's giving them a credit balance, Anita Oliver, and then the other 500 is going to go to outstanding receipts. So I could come into this, reset to draft, and change accounts receivable to sales, and have it push directly to product sales, if I want to, repost. And then we've got it to where it's actually not hitting accounts receivable. I could do that, but I don't really want to do that. I want to make this a little bit cleaner for myself. So we're going to use a new field, an automation, and a little bit of black magic. So first, let's add the new field. We're going to go into studio, make sure we're in developer mode because that makes us feel happy. And we're going to throw this many to one over here. You can stick it wherever. And it's going to be a many to one that's tied to our chart of accounts. So we're going to say with this, I'm going to call it destination account, just because that makes sense to me. And then we're going to go ahead and head over and do our automation next. So let's give ourselves another tab. I'm going to duplicate this. And now we're going to go into automations. So let's go ahead and get our trigger for the automation set up properly first. So let's name this. It's going to be apply destination account to payment. Our model's good, it's in payments. Our trigger is going to be on save, okay? And I'm going to say when we're updating the move ID or the journal entry here, because really, until we have a journal entry, we're not gonna do anything. And that kind of takes the place of posted for us as well. On this apply on domain, we're going to say that the journal entry needs to be set for this to kick off. So we're gonna say journal entry is set and that should be a good trigger for us here. So go ahead and save for right now. And let's test that trigger real quick. Make sure it's kicking off at the right time. So we're gonna say execute code, and we're just gonna say raise user error and triggered. And go ahead and save and close on that, save this, and then we'll go out and test this. The other thing we wanna do is make sure that we're only applying this where we've got our new field destination account set. So we're gonna say destination account Make sure you don't select the one that's part of Base Odoo, if that's part of your version. Go with our new one, which is XStudio Destination Account, and we're going to say that is set. Okay, so confirm and save, and I'm going to test that again real quick. So we're going to go ahead and throw a destination account on this and just call it Outstanding Receipts, which doesn't really do us much good. But we're going to confirm that, click Close, go ahead and remove it, confirm that, and we shouldn't get anything then. So it looks like our trigger is nice and it's applying when we want it to. Now for our code, which has a little sprinkling of black magic in it. So we don't need this user error anymore. Really all we need to do is go into the journal entry that's attached to this payment. And we need to make sure and replace the account for one of the lines with our destination account. And there are other ways to do this, but this is how I like to do it. So we're gonna say for LNE, in record dot move ID dot line IDs. Okay. I'm going to go over how I came up with that just real quick. So I don't have the field move ID on the payment right now. I do have a smart button that takes me to that. But if I want to see what the relationship between my payment and my journal entry is, I can click this little bug right here. Again, I'm in developer mode. And then I can come down to this view form. Okay. And I can look at the model of the view payments and I can look through this and I'm looking for a many to one relationship. So I'm going to sort by field type and I'm going to come down through. It looks like I jumped a bit too far. I need to go back one more. 
I'm looking for a many to one, I'm looking on this, and I want it to be what's tied to my journal entry right here. So I see that the field for that is move underscore ID. So that gives me this part right here. So it's on our current record, then the move underscore ID, and then on the move underscore ID or the journal entry, I want to look at the line underscore IDs. And I get that line underscore IDs by looking in the journal entry and going through selecting this and we can see that all my journal items are the line underscore IDs. That's the technical name. And then this piece of code just says, hey, let's go through all those line underscore IDs and check for something. So there are different ways to identify the journal item that we want to adjust. But what we're going to use is we're going to look at the payment method on our payment and see what the outstanding account is and say if it doesn't equal that, then that's the one that we want to change. So we're going to say if LNE dot account ID. So if our journal item account ID dot ID does not equal, and then we're going to get from this our payment method. So it's going to be payment method line ID. So record dot payment method line ID dot. And then I brought up my journal here. And if you look at it, what I'm looking at here is for these guys, the incoming payment methods. I'm going to look at this, look at the list view. I'm going to say it needs to be equal to or not equal to our payment account ID right here because we're wanting to change the piece that's not our outstanding receipts or outstanding payments. So let's drop that in there here. And then we're going to do something with it if it doesn't match that because we're wanting to change the part that would have been accounts receivable or accounts payable. And now for a little sprinkle of black magic. So because Odoo doesn't like us updating accounts on posted journal entries or posted journal items, we're gonna push this through with SQL. This bypasses any controls that Odoo may have, so you gotta be careful with it. That's why it's thought of as black magic in the community. But essentially what we're doing is we're saying on the table account move line, which is our journal items table, we want to set the account ID equal to our destination account ID. And we're going to do that for any records where the ID equals the ID of our variable LNE. It's nothing too crazy and it works really well, but you just want to be careful with it. So I've got a new payment here. Let's test this out. I'm going to do this for Cherry Nelson. It's going to be 750. Okay. And I'm going to stick this into other income because Cherry's paying us for something that we don't normally do as part of our ongoing operations. So let's confirm and see what happens here. So no errors. That's good. Let's go into the journal entry and it looks like rather than pushing it to AR as it normally would when this is a customer receipt or payment receipt, um, it's going to push it to other income, which again, is our destination account. So it works pretty well. Pretty neat, right? With a little bit of imagination, you can take that same code and you can do a lot of things inside of Odoo, especially if you're needing to clean up accounting. More than a few people I've met accidentally post a lot of entries to specific accounts that they shouldn't have done. So you can take this and you can fix all of those without having to reset to draft and repost every single journal entry. Anyway, that's an example for another time. So if you want to see that, go ahead and drop that in the comments below. And certainly, as always, if you have any other questions, drop those in the comments below or grab some time with me on my Calendly. Thanks again for stopping by, guys. Appreciate all your support. It makes it all worth it. We'll talk again soon.